Are we living in the season of the Lord's return? And if so, how can we know for sure? Stay tuned for an interview with the Dean of American Bible Prophecy Experts. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. We have an exciting interview for you this week. Our special guest is the person I refer to as the Dean of American Bible Prophecy Experts. His name is Noah Hutchins, and he is the director of a Bible prophecy ministry in Oklahoma City that is called Southwest Radio Ministries. Noah, welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Thank you, sir. Well, My pleasure. We're really glad to have you with us. It's a, it's, a, it's a joy and an honor to have a man of your stature on our program. You know, folks, uh, we have each week on this program my colleague Nathan Jones. Uh, Nathan is our web minister here at Lab and Lion, and in that capacity, he all, not only maintains our website, but he ministers to people daily all over the world as they access us through our website to ask questions about Christianity, Bible prophecy, or challenge you about Islam or Hinduism or whatever. Nathan, how about you getting this interview kicked off by asking the first question, okay? Right. Well, we'd like to welcome you in the show, Pastor Hutchins. I have a question for you. Do you believe we're living in the last days, and if so, why? Well, uh, certainly, uh, I uh, do believe that these are the end times, uh, that uh, the Lord could come any day. And, uh, of course, uh, Jesus said that this gospel would be preached in all the world, and then the end would come. For uh, the first time in history, the gospel is being preached in all the world, through missionaries, through radio, through television. So uh, I think there is a very little excuse for anyone in all the world not knowing that uh, Jesus Christ came. You know, in that regard, several years ago, probably 20 years ago, I bought a shortwave radio. I'd never had one. And I turned that thing on, and I was just astounded. As I turned that dial, I heard the name of Jesus in every language of the world. The atmosphere of this planet is saturated with the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, one other uh, item uh, is that uh, we're told in Scripture, and Jesus himself said, the Jews would be scattered into all the world. And then at the end of the age, the last days, they would come back. I've been to Israel 54 times, led to to Israel 54 times. You will find Jews there <laughs> who have returned from every nation in the world. Well, those are certainly two major signs that we are living in the season of the Lord's return. Mm -hmm. You know, people are always criticizing Bible prophecy teachers because they say they're sensationalists and all they do is set dates and then the dates come and pass and, and uh, it's hurtful to Christianity. But you're not a date setter, are you? I've uh, never set a special date, no. It's one uh, thing to say we're in the season of the Lord's return, another to set a date, right? Yes, uh, I don't agree with uh, date setting, and I think all who have are sorry they did. Yes, yeah. yes, they are, and it it brings a lot of reproach upon the uh, name of Christ when people do those sort of things. And and uh, you know, it's amazing. The Bible says that no one knows the day except the Lord Himself, and yet people always seem to think they know the day. <laughs> yes, uh, Jesus said that no one knows that He didn't even know that only the Father knows. Yes. So when you say that we are in the season of the Lord's return, you're not setting a date. You're just saying that all the signs point to the fact that we are living in the general season when the Lord will return. That is absolutely true. Okay. Now, you mentioned, um, uh, you mentioned the Jews. And uh, one other item, could you mention, say, a third reason you think that we're living in the season of the Lord's return? Well, uh, you know, uh, as you look at the book of Revelation and see what is coming upon the world, in the last uh, days, and especially during the coming tribulation period, um, I think uh, the judgments uh, mentioned there are now possible. Yes. We have uh, the nations with 15,000 nuclear deliverable weapons. And uh, so that is uh, something that uh, we should be concerned about. And uh, for the first time, I think the uh, judgment of Revelations uh, 
could be possible. Well, you know, that's an interesting point you're making there because that's exactly the point that uh, Hal Lindsey made in his famous book back in 1970 about the late great planet Earth. He, he basically just said, you know, we've always looked at these judgments as being supernatural, just something supernatural. God's just going to do all this stuff from heaven. But he said, you know, actually, we're living in the first time in all of history where these things could occur naturally as a result of the sin of man. And we could destroy each other with these nuclear weapons and all. And that uh, is certainly true. Yeah, Nathan? Well, I'm just you were saying nuclear weapons, and you're saying when God removes the church, removes the restrainer, it seems like our he's been holding back nuclear weapons for decades. And a lot of those judgments, especially with people getting boils and the sky rolling back like a scroll, all sound nuclear in nature. You know, Nathan, uh, 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 Noah has written a fantastic book. In fact, uh, when I read this book, I, it's right here called 40 Irrefutable Signs of the Last Generation. I thought, man alive, I've got to get him to this program. Yeah. It's an incredible book. And um, in a few minutes, we're going to talk with him about that book and about the signs that he mentions in there. But before we do that, I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about um, you. I want you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and about your background because you are absolutely a remarkable man. And so, folks, in just a few minutes, we will be back and we will talk to Noah about his background. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview with Noah Hutchins, the director of Southwest Radio Ministries in Oklahoma City. You know, Noah, I uh, want to just pause for a moment to wish you a very happy 90th birthday. Thank you, sir. Man alive, that is fantastic. 90 years. Well, it's good to be alive at 90. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I, I know that you had quite a celebration, right? Oh, yes, yes. Um, uh, unbelievable. Well, uh, I just praise God that He has continued to give you the stamina and strength to proclaim the soon return of His Son. Well, Southwest Radio has been going now for 80 years, right? And if you just celebrate your 90th birthday, I can assume you didn't start it at 10 years old, right? <laughs> so maybe you could give us a brief history of the Southwest Radio? No, I uh, did not start the ministry. Uh, I came to the ministry in 1951. Okay. The ministry was started by the late Dr. F. Weber. And uh, he was an evangelist with the Raider uh, team. Mm -hmm. And he came to Oklahoma City and met his wife, and so he decided to stay in Oklahoma City. And that was 1933 when he started the ministry. 1933. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, I was in uh, World War II, come out, went to school, and uh, was looking for a job. And I found a part-time job at the ministry, and it was uh, simply typing. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Weber found out that I had a degree in accounting and business administration, and so he was having trouble with taxes, so he asked me to work on his taxes. <laughs> and he didn't like uh, why the uh, resume I handed him, so he fired me. <laughs> that was the first day. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> As I was going down the steps, uh, he met me and said, Son, do, do you like to fish? He had fired me, and now he's asked me to go fishing. <laughs> so we go out to the local lake, Lake Hefner, and call a lot of fish, come back, and he looked at me and said, Son, I think the Lord has a plan for your life. <laughs> come back. So I went back next morning, and... Uh, you I became a there. bookkeeper, didn't you? I became a bookkeeper. Okay. And uh, he kept, uh, kept the books for Dr. E. F. Weber. And then over a period of time, did he begin to integrate you into writing and radio programs? Well, um, Dr. Weber and I were good friends uh, and uh, went fishing and hunting and uh, I worked in the office. And uh, he went home to be with the Lord in 1959. Okay. And then uh, the uh, ministry was operated as with the Weber family, the two boys, David and Charles, and Ms. Weber. And then one of the boys uh, was called home to be with the Lord in the early 60s. And uh, I uh, worked in with David. And uh, finally, uh, that lasted until 1988. And uh, then David was no longer with the ministry. And uh, uh, so... I became the president of the uh, organization. And what year was that? 
1988. 1988, okay. And since that time, you've been all over the world? Yes, I've uh, been uh, all over Russia, uh, all over uh, Asia, China, uh, uh, Mongolia, Cuba. And, and, and you're a, a book writing machine, right? Yes, uh, <laughs> some uh, say that those who keep count say I've written over 100 books. Wow. Uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, but uh, I think it would be close. Well, uh, tell our viewers, I want you to look right into that camera there and tell our viewers how they can get in touch with you and your ministry. Maybe give them your uh, website address. The uh, website is swrc.com. SWRT.com. Okay, great. And you, they can get on your mailing list there? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, they can, uh, all they got to do is give their name and address. And is your radio program a daily program, weekly or what? Uh, it's a daily program. 30 and minutes. We also have a one-hour program on the weekend. Okay. And so they can get that scheduled from your website? Certainly. Okay, great. Well, uh, that uh, fascinating story there of how you go from the... Getting fired the first day <laughs> to becoming the bookkeeper to becoming the director of such an influential ministry. That is, that is wonderful. And I understand you're working on a new book right now. Yes, I am. Uh, I think it's one that needs to be written. What's the title of it? Uh, the uh, Christian Cleansing of America. Christian Cleansing of America. And what you mean by that really is how certain people are trying to cleanse America of Christianity. Right, right. Out of the schools, uh, out of the government, uh, uh, you know, you can't uh, uh, put a uh, scripture in school anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I remember 19, when I was going to school in 1927, you started this uh, day with prayer and hey, Bible reading. I was in school in the 40s and 50s, and when I graduated in 1956 from high school, we were praying every day. We were having devotionals every day. We were reading from the Bible every day. Yeah, a lot has changed, and it's changed very fast. Incidentally, I think you told me that you wrote an article about the Christian cleansing of America and that it uh, had such an impact that one person called and ordered 30,000 copies of it, right? Uh, that is right. Yesterday, uh, I wrote a, a newsletter on the subject, and uh, yesterday, uh, someone from Los Angeles called and ordered 30000 to... Well, I think you're going to have a good market for your book. Uh, well, I think it's one that needs to be uh, uh, written and uh, disseminated because uh, Christians uh, aren't understanding what's going on. Well, I, I saw and uh, heard a speech recently by Jim Garlow, who's a Nazarene uh, preacher in California, and he's a great church historian. And he was talking about the history of the church in the United States. And he said that we started out the first 250 years, uh, 230 years of this country, if, I mean from the time of the Puritans, as the establishment of the United States. Christianity was the establishment. And then over the years, we went from the establishment until he said in 2008, we became a persecuted minority. And he said, that's, that's where true Bible-believing Christians are today. We are a persecuted minority. Uh, yes. I, I think Dr. Franklin Graham uh, recently stated that uh, Christians uh, are in danger uh, in the coming decade. Yes, yes. More and more persecution. More and more persecution. All over the world. All over the world, and even in this country. Uh, the idea of wearing a cross around your neck. Uh, uh, well, you can't do that because that's, you know, you're, you, you can't do this on the job here. And uh, can't post the uh, Ten Commandments in the classroom. Uh, you can't, uh, it just goes on and on and on. And it's becoming more and more severe as people are persecuted for their faith. Seems like every week something new comes up. You know, I, I, I was I, I thought you reminded me of a case recently in New Mexico where a lesbian couple went to a photographer and said, we want you to photograph our wedding. And the photographer said, well, I, I just that would be a, opposed to my religious convictions. Now, there were many other photographers they could have gone to, but they knew this photographer was going to do that because they wanted a court case. And they filed a court case. It went to the Supreme Court of New Mexico, and they ruled that the photographer had violated their constitutional rights, and the photographer had to pay a large fine, even though it violated the photographer's religious beliefs. That is uh, absolutely true. Uh, one of the chapters in my book will be uh, uh, on the uh, judicial system, the judge, Supreme Court, and the federal judge system. 
uh, decision after decision is anti-Christian. Okay, well, let's take a pause and we'll come back and talk about your great book. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview with Noah Hutchings about the signs of the times that point to the soon return of Jesus. Noah, you have just written a fabulous book. It's called, it's this book here called 40 Irrefutable Signs of the Last Generation. And I mean, it is great. I, I just love it. I love uh, it's, it's It's to the point. It has beautiful illustrations all the way through it. I compliment you on it. It's a great job. Why did you name it? That title. What, how did you come up with that title? Well, uh, one reason I, I wrote uh, it uh, on that subject and that title, uh, you know, uh, people still don't uh, relate to the Bible and prophecy. Many Christians don't. And uh, Peter uh, wrote, uh, I believe in the second epistle, that in the last days there would come scoffers saying, Where is the promise of his coming? In spite of all the signs in the world that uh, the uh, end was near, the last generation, uh, uh, they would still say, where is the promise of his coming? So uh, I thought, uh, I'm going to write some signs that no one can dispute. Irrefutable signs of the second coming. And then uh, I said, well, how many am I going to deal with? And I thought 40 would be a good number <laughs> because 40 is the number of probationary judgment. That's right. <laughs> 40 days and then it's going to be destroyed. <laughs> and we could uh, trace that, uh, the multiples of four, you know. Well, you know, I think that one of the reasons that when I saw this book advertised that I wanted to get it immediately was because several years ago I spoke at a conference, a Stealing the Mind conference, and they asked me, to speak on the topic, 50 Reasons Why We're Living in the End Times. And we put out a video by that name, 50 Reasons Why We're Living in the End Times. And so when I saw this 40 irrefutable signs, I thought, well, I got to get that, compare it to mine, and see how it all came out. But uh, it's a, uh, you're so right when you talk about Second uh, Peter being fulfilled in our day and time of people scoffing. But you see, the thing that breaks my heart is that when I used to read that, I thought, well, that means unbelievers. But the church today is full of people scoffing, pastors who say, ah, you know, it's a bunch of nonsense. I'm, I'm not going to talk about Bible prophecy. And here we are with Jesus at the very gates of heaven, ready to return. Uh, Brother Reagan, uh, you raised an important point there. Uh, I don't think there is one church in a hundred now that uh, ever mentioned the subject of prophecy or uh, the times we're living in or that uh, Jesus could come back in our lifetimes. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But uh, it's a subject that's uh, neglected. It certainly is. Well, you know, in your book is divided into three parts. Uh, part one talks about 24 signs in the secular world. The second part talks about 12 signs related to Israel. And the third part is entitled Terminal Apostasies. Now, let's talk about the first part first. You talk about tw 24 signs in the secular world. What would be some of those? Now, you don't have to name all 24, but what? just give us an example of a few. Well, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, uh, increase of knowledge. Uh, Daniel said that Daniel in the last learn. days many yeah. would run to yeah. and pro and knowledge would be increased. Without the increase of knowledge, there wouldn't be a television set. You and I would not be sitting here. There wouldn't be a radio. Satellites. There would not be automobiles. Yeah. There would not be airplanes. There would not be atomic weapons. So that is one of the most important uh, prophecies in the Bible. In the 12th chapter of Daniel, that in the end of the age, Knowledge would increase, and many would run to and fro. Nathan's been doing a lot of work on that recently, haven't you, Nathan? Signs of the Times, yeah. I'll be talking about it at our conference this year in June, that the signs of technology are proving that we are in the last days because the technology we have today make a lot of, like you said earlier, those judgments during the tribulation possible. What would be another one of those secular signs? Uh, of course, in uh, national signs, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, Israel has been in all the world and, in, and back in the world. And uh, there are wars and rumors of wars. Uh, Jesus said there would be pestilences in the last days. You say, well, 
uh, don't we have all these medical uh, advances and uh, for flu and pneumonia yeah. and uh, all these other things that we get? Well, that is true. But uh, still, we have the greatest plague the world has ever known, yeah. AIDS. Yeah. I think uh, something like 40 million people have already died of AIDS. Yeah. Now, if that had been smallpox and some other disease, yeah, it would be uh, something terrible. But they cover it up because it's a protected disease. Right. And uh, I think that's one of the signs in the last days. Well, you also, um, part two of your book, you focus on 12 signs that relate to Israel. You must believe that Israel is a very, very important thing to have a whole section just devoted to it. Uh, yes. Actually, I wrote about 25 messianic signs in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> but, a uh, I, I deal on. with 12 of them, and the major signs in this book. Yes. And uh, there are so many of them. Uh, that they would be scattered into all the world, come back from all nations. Uh, the land would, uh, blossom and bud and fill the whole world with fruit. That is literally happening. And their language being revived. Uh, language, uh, being revived. They're speaking Hebrew again. And, uh, they still have not come to the knowledge of the truth yet that they might be saved. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that's uh, there. There are at least uh, twenty-five major signs. I deal with twelve of the major ones in, in this book. Wow! And then your third section has to do with terminal apostasies. Now, what in the world is that all about? Well, uh, you know, you read in scripture of certain places where a nation or people has gone so far that said God gave them up to a reprobate mind. Or, or turned his face from them, like he did Israel. I think a nation or people can go so far that God turns his face from them mm. and brings judgment. And uh, in that uh, section, I deal with things that we're doing here in the United States. For example, we're teaching children in school that uh, the earth evolved and uh, everything evolved, and that disputes the uh, scriptures that God is the creator. And we're not even allowed to give an alternative viewpoint. Yeah, and Jesus said, if you uh, uh, do this to one of these little children, if you harm one of these little children, that's the worst thing you can do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the same thing. And you have abortion. I, uh, reading in the, uh, paper this last week, a special report, that there's one organization, I won't mention it, has, uh, counted for 333,000 abortions this last year. Well, I will mention it. Planned Parenthood. And they're very proud of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were bragging about the fact they performed more abortions than ever before. I think it should be called Planned Non-Parenthood. <laughs> yes. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, and, uh, there are many other things, uh, that, uh, we were, we're doing there that, uh, in, in this country even, that I think God will not tolerate. Uh, for example, the, uh, uh, our, uh, our toleration and even promotion of homosexuality and same-sex marriage. That is certainly true. And that is one of the signs that uh, Paul gives in the book of Romans of a nation that is about to collapse as a nation that tolerates that sort of stuff. And uh, over and over in the scriptures, uh, Sodom was given as an example. You don't do this. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Or what happened to Sodom will happen to you. Yes. In Romans 1, Paul says that any nation that does this is worthy of death. Okay. So we've got the secular signs. We've got the signs of Israel, and then we've got the four signs that you call terminal apostasies that really beg for the judgment of God to come upon a nation. And uh, regretfully that uh, we're involved in all four here in this country. Well, you know, that reminds me of a sign that you mentioned in, in there, and that is the sign of Noah. It says, you're Noah, the sign <laughs> of Noah, that uh, in the end times, society will become as immoral and as violent as it was in the days of Noah. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, uh, our newspapers, uh, and TV and radio are full of, uh, everyone, uh, every day being killed and, uh, all this happening and violence, immorality, movies and TV. Last night I flipped on the TV 
and I show, saw uh, advertisements of programs to come, new programs this year. I couldn't believe my eyes. One of them was called Scandal, and it was all about who's sleeping with whom and all this sort of thing. Another one was called Revenge. The whole program is about somebody each week getting revenge. The third program, so help me, was called Californication, a play on the word of California. Californication is the name of the new program. That's, we're just wallowing in a cesspool in this country right now. And we export that all over the world. That is uh, absolutely true. Uh, our uh, radio programs, our TV uh, programs here, and a lot of uh, other countries have always looked to this uh, nation as an example. And what kind of example are we setting now? Not a very good one. So uh, I've often said we, the United States of America that claims to be a Christian nation, we are the moral polluter of planet Earth. Right. And uh, we might wonder uh, how long will God allow this? Well, folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you. In just a moment, our announcer will tell you how you can obtain a copy of Mr. Hutchins' great book, 40 Irrefutable Signs of the Last Generation. Pastor Hutchings, uh, which of those signs did you enjoy writing about the most? I think uh, possibly the uh, sign that uh, Israel would be scattered into all the world. And at the end of the uh, age, before the Lord comes back, they would return from all nations, and Israel would again blossom and fill the whole world with fruit. Well, I tell you what, we're going to invite you to come back next week, and we're going to talk about that some more, okay? Amen. All right. Well, folks, that's our program. I hope you'll be back with us next week, the Lord willing. This is Dave Reagan speaking for myself and Nathan Jones saying, Look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Is this the last generation of this age? To find out, get a copy of Dr. Noah Hutchings' book, 40 Irrefutable Signs of the Last Generation. While Dr. Hutchings is against setting specific dates for Christ's return, he documents 40 signs that are to occur in the last generation relative to our world today. This book gives you over 200 pages of riveting information and is divided into three sections. One, irrefutable signs of the last days in the secular world. Two, irrefutable signs of the last days in Israel. And three, terminal apostasies. Dr. Hutchins draws upon his extensive missions work on four continents, leading 54 Bible tours to Israel, writing over 100 books, and presenting over 20,000 radio and television programs. To order this book for a donation of $15 or more plus shipping, call the number you see on the screen Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or order online at lamblion.com. Dr. Reagan's DVD entitled 50 Reasons Why We Are Living in the End Times can be ordered for a donation of $12 or more, plus the cost of shipping. Or if you order now, you can get the 40 Irrefutable Signs of the Last Generation book by Dr. Hutchings and the 50 Reasons DVD by Dr. Reagan for a donation of $25 or more. Just ask for offer number 730. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. 